Welcome back. I am so excited, you have no idea. I woke up today to the best email. It was from, okay, I'm fangirling, Elena Lazareva. She is a coloring book artist that does the most amazing artwork for her books. They're romantic, they're beautiful, they're done in grayscale and in line. I was literally fangirling because she didn't know that I knew who she was. And when I got the, the email this morning, I was like, okay, Lori, just be cool. How you doing? <laughs> and meanwhile, in my, my, my brain was going, it's Elena. It's Elena. I love her work. I have always loved her work. And she has invited me to do a collab, which I felt like, like, duh, I would definitely do this one. <laughs> I have been looking for the right eyes. In fact, I have bought several books just for an eyeball. And she hands me this today, like, oh, this, like this? Well, this is a PDF that is available in her Etsy shop. She's both on Amazon and in Etsy. I will leave both the links in the description box below. This is available on her Etsy shop. It is the absolute perfect practice eye that you could find out there. It's literally beautiful and we can go through the entire eye and how to do it. If you want to get the PDF and practice, it's available to you. So again, I will leave the link in the description. So let's get started because I can't wait to, to dive into these eyes. Now, there's two sets. Uh, this is the one that I chose to work with at the beginning, but they're both equally as beautiful. So I like this one because it's nice and clear and open. So we're going to work from this eye first. I got a lot of combos for you guys because eyes are quick, easy, and really fun to do. I could sit there and do these eyes all day long and not even need a break. So I'm going to put you on two times so we can get you nice and close up to the eye. Look how detailed that is. Oh, those lashes are beautiful. Perfect. So let's talk about an eye and what you look for in an artistic eye in a book. Now, a lot of books do not have eyes that look as beautiful as this one. Her books have eyes that look as beautiful as this one. We're going to be talking for months about her books. I'm just going to say we just are. So this eye, the first one we're going to do, and this is the pencils for it. We have white, we have cream, we have light aqua, burnt okra, a little bit of black, indigo blue, and I've picked out warm gray. You can use cool gray. That's fine too, and that's a 70%. And whenever I look at eyes, I try to get where the light is coming from because that's going to be the uh, the highlight in the eye. You don't have to just do a dot. There is a dot there. It's, it's good. I'm going to change that up. It's the standard dot. But eyes reflect light. And they're reflecting the light from anything that's around them. So sometimes the white in the eye or the highlight in the eye isn't always white. You can have a blue highlight in there. A Whatever is around you, it's a reflective highlight. So we're going to start off with this one. And I just want to block in a little bit more of the highlight and let me see which one I chose for this. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of square. And it's going to come out kind of like an L in there. Now, we will work on that and brighten it up in a little while. But I just wanted to put that little white dot there. It saves the space and opens it up. 
Now, if you notice in this picture, and I'm going to leave it there and not change it, she also has a highlight right there, and this is good because it's going to make the eye look really moist. And who wants a dry eye? She also has a little bit of reflective highlights up here. And these are all things that you would see in the structure of a real eye. Nobody thinks to put a highlight into the iris of the eye. Now, you know, you can. It's going to look good. Another area of the eye that's always there in all eyes, eyes are not solid. That iris is not a solid structure. It's a movable muscle. So all eyes are striated. They're not, you're not going to color this eye in with one color. In fact, you're going to go with layers of color. And that's why I've picked out an array of colors to use. So we're going to make sure that the outside of the eye, which I'm going to use my indigo blue on for now, is going to be darkened. Remember, we are on layer one of this eye. Now, I know this is a grayscale, but it goes for all, and you can always change up somebody else's eye. Another thing that is in all eyes is a shadow. And it's a must-have shadow. This shadow goes on top of the eyeball, right under the lashes. It goes from here, under the eye, over this. You can't have an eye that's looking dimensional without putting the shadow in. And then it goes over here because the eyelid is always protruding and whatever's protruding creates a shadow. So right now we're just talking about what's in every structure of an eye. Then you're going to want the waterline. Now the waterline is a double line and you can see she's included in here. It's here, to, here and there and it's usually a pinker color but a lot of women put um, eye makeup on it and darken it up so sometimes it's a structure that you will leave as natural and sometimes it's not. It could be a little bit pink. So let's, I didn't, let's get out a little pinky color and I'm going to use a seashell because I'm going to actually add in a little bit of makeup to her and we're going to put in this area as it always is it being there. Okay, remember now we're not doing this eye specifically, we're talking in generalities. Now, another thing that the eye always has is the tear duct, which is always a little bit pink. And it's not usually that flat, we're going to add structure to it and dimension to it as we go along. Now, the eyeball itself when you're coloring an eye, is always a ball in a socket. You know how to color in a ball. We've gone over this. You put the highlights, it curves, it's darker on the outside. When doing an eyeball in art, the white of the eye is usually got very little white in it. It's very shadowed. It's very curved. And you want to create the, the look of that curve. So it's always going to have a little bit, and I've got my gray out now, a little bit darker over here and over here. Okay, and that's not blended out yet. Something else I usually do with my eyes, the eyelashes. Now, they can actually get lost in there while you're doing the eyes. And I normally use a magic marker, a very, very, very fine lined marker. But her eyes are so dark now, I feel that I could do it with 
a black pencil because it has such nice ink on it. And remember, we're talking about using a tapered stroke. I talk about this all the time. Eyelashes are always tapered. So practice your flicks. Remember, we talked about how to flick it to be tapered at the end, and it's going to go up and up. Now, eyelashes are also not always straight. So you're going to have where this eyelash is crossing over this, and it's going to be, for a natural eye, sort of like a triangle on the bottom. And you see it happened over here. So she's a fantastic artist. She's, I don't even have to fake it, and sometimes I do on the lashes. So I want to make sure that the the lashes all have that um, that triangly look on the bottom. Also, some lashes, especially on the bottom, cross. So hers is a little bit straight. Sometimes I like to take my and cross it over, give a little imperfection to perfection, if you get what I mean because naturally your eyelashes are going to go like that. And then you sometimes have an eyelash that goes downward. Not all your eyelashes are going upward. So if you want to just include a little bit of realism in it, you can make a wayward eyelash. Eyelashes are thinner and shorter as they go towards the middle of the eye and thicker and longer as they go towards the end of the eye. So we're going to just work on that. Is this indigo? No, it's black. See, what I like about doing eyelashes and something like this is I don't necessarily color over her lashes. Because we're looking at something that I want depth on and there's several rows of eyelashes, what I usually do is when I have something like this, I'll leave that back row and I'll add my own into the foreground and just use that as the background lashes. And they're varying sizes. Etc. I'd probably make this one a little sm um, a little smaller once I find my eraser. We're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna shorten that one lash. Maybe it might just blend in nicely. So now you get to the the fun. Those are the, the structures that are always gonna be in the eye. Every eye is like it, and if you have to add them into a picture that doesn't have that. Always try to, no matter how small the eye is, if you can add just those few structures into the eye, you're always going to get a more natural looking eye. The fun part is looking for nice big irises to, to have a good time with. And there's plenty to do on this one. So I'm going to get out, let's see, what are we going to work with first? Okay, I'm going to put a little bit more indigo on the outside, fading it in towards the eye into the middle. Okay, getting that light layer in there. Now, on a real eye, you want to see the iris going underneath the lower lid. This is the proper way to drawing an eye. If you have a full circle going around this, there's something not right with the eye. Now, on another one of her eyes here, this is perfectly okay. You'll see the upper ones. The eye is looking, obviously, up. So you're going to see a little bit on the bottom, and it's tucked under the top. So that's when it's looking up. So that's perfectly okay too. And on this, it would look very good once you get that shadow going um, over it. 
So let's go back to the one I'm doing now. We don't work around in circles with an iris. An iris is muscular and it spreads out from the pupil. A pupil is really not round, although it appears to be round. It's not. It's muscular and it's striated and puckered. So when we're looking at this, you're always going to work from in or out. Like that. Okay. Now, when you put that darker color in, you can use a gray, you can use a black, although I like to use a, an indigo blue um, or a gray. Not so much black because you don't want to add black in too early. So I'm going to do this one in light aqua. And I'm going to start moving my pencil going in the direction towards the pupil. Going around. And that's the direction you're going to work in while you're doing the eyes. I like to use a tapered stroke just because that's the stroke I'm comfortable with. And I'm going to try not to cover where I put that highlight, although you probably could add um, more, you know, color over that and put the it in. I'll just get a brighter color if I don't do that. Now, a guy, an eye always has structure in it, at least when you're um, coloring it going to have black so that it looks like it's coming in and out. Now, I'm not going to use black, of course. I'm going to use a gray. Nice sharp tip. And I'm going to sort of pencil in some inner structures into here so that they're there. Remember, we're still doing bottom layer. We're going to push that layer down and into the eye. So, I'm just working along where I might have some flex. Now, it's always a darker fleck, at least a little bit, even though you're adding some other colors to it. And the color combinations that you use are strictly up to you. But there's usually, even with blue eyes, there's usually a, um, a golden in there. And that's why I, I picked the burnt okra. And for the burnt okra, I'm going to put that near the pupil of the eye. You don't have to add too much. I'm working outward. And it would center out from the pupil. And we'll just get that a little bit more on that side. Still, we got bottom layer going on here. Now, with blue eyes, I want to add in some white. Now, not just for the highlight. The highlight's going to be like a bright white. But I do want to add in some white so there's some striation in the eye. Especially with light eyes. And as you can see here with my white, I'm starting to blend in some of those darker marks that I had made so that I push them down and make it look three dimensional. Another thing you may see in an eye, and it's pretty common, a pencil I didn't get out before, but I'm going to get out now, is a little bit of red. That's normal in most 
eyes and you're going to put the red little bit of veins in the white of the eye. Doesn't have to be too much, but you know, she's a pretty girl. She's been partying a little bit. Very thin hair like projections. Okay? It's to make it look very natural. Now, we're going to get the color going a little bit darker. We're going to start second layer on here. And I'm going to go over the other areas, over some of the darker areas, and that pushes the darker into the paper, making it look much more natural. Okay, now I'm going to go in and blend in a little of the indigo on the outside, working on second layer, push that first layer down, keeping it nice and tight, nice and clean. And I'm going to go back to my gray now. And I want to make sure that that shadow is staying where it's supposed to be. Doing a second layer on it. Okay. Now, in the crease of the eye, that's going to also have a little bit of gray. Now, the way the eyeball is formed, the corners down here, very light, and in here are going to be a little darker. Because what have you done? You're creating that bump of it going that way. This is the reason why I like to do my eyelashes in ink. You can get a very fine um, marker, a fine line. They have them in so fine that you can do a tiny hair. Okay, now I'm going to get a little bit of gray going right at the watermark. Just to add a little bit more dimension there. And that's the inner corner of the watermark. And then you have the eyelashes coming from the outside of that. I'm going to do another couple of layers on this. Going over where I had before, I'm going to put you on hyperlapse so that this tutorial doesn't last three hours. <laughs> Even before I add makeup on, I like to add a flesh tone onto the eyelid and just so that my skin tones come out even. And eye makeup is usually not into the eyes anyway, so right now I'm using on her some seashell. And I'm going in between the lashes. Now, what the seashell is also going to do, it's going to blur out some of my lashes, which is good because it'll add dimension to the lashes, and then I'm going to go over them again. Okay, and then, of course, up here under the brow, this is first layer, light.
Of course, you're going to varnish this and do circular on upper layers, but this is just my first light layer. I always do my first layer with this type of stroke because it doesn't damage the tooth of the paper. And it just starts to get that richness in there. Now, another area that is light is under the brow. And that's because the eye goes in, but the eye socket at this point is the opposite. And this would be a light area. So I'm just putting in a little bit of white underneath. So when you put something white underneath, it's never going to be as dark. You'll always have a little bit lighter of an area. And also under here, because this is where the eye is coming out and sort of would go this way. So there's always going to be a little light area over here. And this is in general, this is with all eyes that you do. And the middle here would always be a little bit lighter because it's a ball and this would strike the light. Now I'm going into the next layers. Not too dark in the crease. We're going to lighten that up because I'm going to be like doing makeup on her. So I'm going to lighten that up a bit. Okay, I'm starting to shadow it and my shadows would go over here. And I'm using um, burnt okra. And this is the outer corner of the eye because the other eye would be over here. That's, this is the right eye. And I'm just darkening up the outer area very lightly. See, it's barely turning color. You gotta, when you're working this lightly, that's what it should do. It should develop. I'm also going to darken up where the crease is in there to give it some dimension. They have all sorts of, you know, great eye makeup looks that you could duplicate. I may do a few for you. I just want to get the basic eye done and then I can have some fun with this. Okay, I have several layers on now. I'm going to blend it out with a little bit of lavender spike oil. Lavender spike is healthier for you to breathe than Gamsol or mineral spirits. And I'm getting kind of tired of having to get my birds out of my room every time I want to blend something out. So I'm just using it with a little bit of a little brush and trying to get out all my hard lines. Now, if you use this on the lashes, it's going to blend out your lashes. But again, that's not bad because once you put the final lashes on, it'll make them look like they're very thick and luscious and layered. I'm being very specific where I'm putting this on because I don't want everything blended and I don't want to lose all my detail. So nothing wrong with working slowly. I'm going to add also a little bit of cream into it just to lighten up the okra and adding 
darker lashes on the top. I forgot to mention in her fashion book, the eyes are included in that book, in the coloring book. So if you get that coloring book, it'll have this in there too. I'm adding in a little bit of black raspberry into the crease. Now at this point, it's makeup. <laughs> it's not structure of the eye anymore. And then I'm gonna put a little bit down here. As I said, this is makeup. So however you do makeup, it's really not that that different. Okay, I decided to go straight to the dark umber because there's so much ink on this because it's a um, grayscale. I don't want my eyebrows to be too dark. You can give it a little wayward hair here or there. And one that maybe not goes completely down. It can go in the other direction because it, it is hair. And we all get it. Just darkening that up. And the top of the lid, another layer. See, by keeping it very light, it begins to look very lifelike. The more layers you do, the more depth the eye will look. That's why I'm going as light. I have a lot of tooth left on this page. I don't have to use up all the tooth, but I'm just saying I have the option still. Okay, I'm going to blend that more in the eyeshadow. You know how they, they say if you ever watch like Jeffree Star doing makeup or one of the makeup gurus? Blend, 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 blend. Well, put your makeup on your eyes the same way. Lots of blending. Just fading it out a bit. Now remember earlier when I put that white underneath the eye? That's why you're having that white right there, that light. And that, that I'm going to blend in in just a minute. Okay. Circular blending stroke is your circle stroke. Now over here in the corners, it would get a little darker where I'm blending with the skin tone. Because this would start forming the bridge of the nose. Bridge of the nose would be right over here. And I'm going to pink up in here just a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to just blend it out down here with a little bit of white because it'll fade off into the page. I'm going to kind of just have a an eyeball sitting on the page. <laughs> See how much fun? As soon as I saw this, I knew. I was like, oh, that is an eyeball I have to do. Get a little under here. And I could sit here for another hour tweaking this. But I'm going to blend it up, snap a pick, and then I'll start working on the other ones that will come out in another video in today, I guess. <laughs> okay, 
I will see you in my next video. Take care. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that like and subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell for all notifications. For another video just like this one, I recommend this. And I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Keep on coloring.